Scano, Sago, and hello, everyone. I'm Lori Davis-Hill with your Six Nations COVID-19 podcast. Before we get things underway, a little bit of housekeeping. Now, you may have noticed that we did not issue a podcast yes, podcast yesterday, and that's because we've decided to record for you on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Rest assured, though, if the course of this pandemic changes, we will go back to our regular broadcast schedule. Now that we've taken care of that, let's get things started. As you all know, or for those just joining, I am the Director of Six Nations Health Services and Incident Command for the COVID-19 pandemic response while our current state of emergency remains in place. I know it's hot out today, and given our current heat wave, we'll have more on that later. But stay in the shade, keep cool, and let's venture on over to our wellness area. Dropping by today is our usual Wednesday guest. We welcome her regularly for her knowledge and tips during our current circumstances. And that's Natasha Slezak, Community Crisis Coordinator. Thanks for stopping in today. I hope you're, Natasha, I hope you're keeping cool like the rest of us. Tell us what kind of information you'd like to share with us today. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me back on the podcast today. I'm pleased to share with you all some information on quarantine and isolation. While physical distancing helps slow the spread of COVID-19, it is no secret that the effects of isolation can negatively impact our mental health. Now more than ever, it is essential for all to emotionally support each other while abiding by the distancing measures recommended by our health officials. Quarantine is separating well people who have been exposed to the virus to see if they become ill. And self-isolation is separating people who have symptoms so that they cannot infect others, including close family members. This is needed to prevent the spread of a virus in a community. How do we deal with this? Well, dealing with isolation, people placed in quarantine or self-isolation may experience a wide range of feelings, including fear, anger, sadness, irritability, guilt, or confusion. They may find it hard to sleep. Some people might feel relieved. Humans are social creatures and need to connect to others to thrive, which can make isolation challenging. The following suggestions might help you through this difficult time. Keeping busy. Create a schedule and stick to it. Create a schedule for your work, leisure, chores, meals, and physical activity, and sleep. Some people will not be able to work when they are quarantined. Loss of income is a major source of fear, and not everyone has a supportive work environment. During this time, you can catch up on other tasks or projects at home. Some people may need to adjust their work environment when quarantined. Explore with your employer. Will, uh, exploring this with your employer will allow you to work from home and attend meetings via teleconference or video conferencing. Do things that you normally love to do, crosswords, puzzles, reading, TV shows, listening to music, or just getting out in nature. Social interaction is also very important. Think of ways to stay connected to other people. You can do this by video chat, phone, or text. Becoming a pen pal with a young loved one can have benefits for for, for both the person in isolation and the youth that are practicing their handwriting and reading while they're not attending school. Talking to others and sharing how you, how you are feeling is very important. So is asking for help when you are feeling overwhelmed. As usual, self-care is so very important. As much as possible, prepare, prepare healthy meals and drink lots of water. Stay physically active. Go online. Find exercises that you can do at home with no equipment. Practice relaxation or meditation or mindfulness. Get outdoors, get outdoors and enjoy nature. Another thing you can do to help is to prepare ahead. Plan with family members or friends to get additional food and supplies if you are quarantined. Use delivery services to order groceries or your local or nearest grocery store may also offer this service. Ask your pharmacy if they can deliver medications when you are in need or plan ahead to make sure you have enough medication to last throughout your quarantine. If you take opiates to treat either chronic pain or addictions, make sure that the pharmacist and prescriber are available to ensure there is no uninterrupted supply of your medications. Also, keep a list of your important numbers, including your doctor, public health, pharmacy, and hospital, in case you are in need. How to support a loved one? Most spread of COVID-19 is between those who have close contact, so it's critical to create distance between the person at risk and the others in the household. Unfortunately, this can worsen feelings of loneliness or abandonment, especially for someone who has a pre-existing mental illness or a developmental problem. 
How can you support a loved one? Keep the lines of communication open and talk regularly. Through video chat, phones, messaging apps, or text messages is, are all good options. Be a good listener. Ask about their general health, the food that they might need, tasks that need to be done, and other ways that you may be able to help them. Help them stay distracted with work, hobbies, music, movies, and other activities. Help them structure their day and encourage them to limit the amount of news they consume. If they have a pre-existing mental health illness, make sure that they have access to their medications and that the condition is not getting worse. Connect them to their local health care provider or any reliable support service available. Example, Big White Wall in Ontario. More information at the end of uh, my update here. If you or a loved one are concerned about new symptoms, please follow your local health authority's guidance for accessing care. For more information on resources, please visit the Center for Addictions and Mental Health, CAMH website, Six Nations COVID-19 Updates Facebook page. Um, the Big White Wall is an excellent resource. It's an online peer-to-peer uh, support community for mental health. Um, they have an anonymous uh, online community where members can support each other in a safe environment along with access uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There's also trained practitioners available 24-7 to keep that community safe. Self-assessments and um, recommended resources, creative tools are also available on this website. We also have our local mental health and addiction services. They can be contacted at 519-445-2143. Also, we have the Six Nations Crisis Line available 24-7 and they can be reached at 519 445-2204 445-2204 or toll free at 1-866-445-2204. The resources that I did mention in today's podcast, um, there should be some links um, right there on the YouTube page if anybody wants further information. I wanted to thank you all again for having me on the podcast. Stay safe and stay well, everybody. Now and Natasha, so stay cool out there. Um, and thanks for dropping in and visiting with us today. During this unprecedented era of COVID-19, it is important we provide and help all that we possibly can to anyone and do our best to alleviate those potential feelings of anxiousness, uneasiness, or nervousness. Well, let's move on to over to the numbers. Provincially in Ontario yesterday, the province recorded 230 cases of COVID-19 with no lab delays. This is the lowest number since the end of March. Looking towards our own area of Six Nations, our count stands at four cases, or sorry, 14 cases of COVID-19. One case has been, is uh, active, 12 of our cases have been considered resolved, and one of our total case count has resulted in death. So far, we have tested 800 individuals, 773 tests have been returned COVID negative. Uh, We have 18 test swabs that are awaiting analysis and lab verification. 32 individuals are currently recommended into a self-isolation through dialogue with the Shrigan Public Health. Numbers now from our population uh, surrounding areas. Mississaugas of the Credit remains at one case reported. Haldem and Norfolk Public Health Unit reports 397 cases. Of those, 226 cases are active, 140 are resolved, and 31 deaths. Brown Public Health Unit reports 116 positive cases. Eight of those cases are active, 104 are resolved, and four deaths. Hamilton Public Health Unit reports 745 total cases, 121 are active, 583 are resolved, and 41 deaths. And the Toronto Public Health Unit reports 12,828 total positive cases, 1,969 are active, 9,907 are resolved, and a total of 952 deaths to date. We now note that as of Monday, the province has announced phase two of the plan to spur commerce activity throughout Ontario, which regionally lets some communities that are adjacent to Six Nations, such as Brant County, to begin operations with less restrictions. This means areas like outdoor dining services at restaurants, bars and other establishments, including patios, curbside parking lots and adjacent properties can open, select personal and personal care services with the proper health and safety measures in place may open, including tattoo parlors, barbershops, hair salons, and beauty salons. 
Shopping malls under existing restrictions, including food services, can reopen for takeout and outdoor dining only. Tour and guide services, such as bike and walking tours, bus and boat tours, as well as tasting and tours for wineries, breweries, and distilleries. And not to mention, the pro- province is now allowing the social group size to increase from 5 to 10 people in all areas. Please monitor our communications to know what Six Nations is prepared to do. Um, now more than ever, if you find yourself in any of these opening settings, places, or locations, please adhere to public health guidelines. Monitor yourself and your symptoms. Ensure that uh, as more things come back online, COVID-19 is not one of them. Test is a four-letter word, and so is call. To reverse that order, and you have call for test, which is what we want you to do. A simple phone call to the Six Nations COVID-19 Assessment Centre and and you can schedule an appointment that will give you a test for COVID-19 and may give you some peace of mind. The COVID-19 hotline is open uh, seven days a week to take your calls. Even if you have the mildest or simplest of symptoms, you can put your mind at ease and get tested. You can reach the Six Nations COVID-19 Assessment Centre at 226-446-9909 or toll free at 1-855-977-7737. Again, please keep track of where you're going and who you're seeing on a daily basis. If you become sick, it is really difficult to remember. Um, And you will be asked about the past two weeks and specifically the last 48 hours before you start to have symptoms. This helps us to identify where you might have picked up the virus and where it might have spread. Keep Six Nations healthy and moving forward by wearing a mask in public. Keep social distancing. Wash your hands frequently. Don't touch your face and clean high touch areas often. Yes, those masks will protect us. They protect me from you and you from me. So let's keep wearing them. Let's make them a fashion trend and let's make them cool. Before we meet up again on Friday, stay cool and stay safe and remember the following during this heat wave. Reduce, eliminate, or reschedule strenuous activities until the coolest time of the day. Wait until the sun goes down to clean your car, porch, or deck. Wear lightweight, loose-fitting, light-colored clothing to reflect heat. And remember that dark, especially black, will attract the heat. Eat easy-to-digest foods like fruit or salads and sanitize them all before eating. Drink plenty of water and drink the water even if you don't feel thirsty. Focus on non-alcoholic and decaffeinated fluids since alcohol and caffeine can dehydrate you. Water with ice can help you feel hydrated and will even help those of us who experience complications from diabetes. Spend time in air conditioning if you should have an air conditioner. Some people choose to sit in their air conditioned car for a a short period of time. Lose electric fans. Try to stay out of the sun, take cool baths or showers, and also remember your fur family members. Keep them a a supply of water and ensure they are not too active in the sun. Monitor yourself for any signs of heat exhaustion and um, make sure to monitor your family members as well. And before we close, please remember our frontline workers here on Six Nations and around the world. Please stay home for them. Please stay home for all of us. Stay well and stay safe. Yeah,